bounce gamble like you can hear it. Hey Gamble, what's happening, brother? Hey JJ, it's Monday again. We're back for another recording of the Digital Ramble. This will be episode 14. Goodness gracious, 14. It's amazing how quick, you know, these weeks just click on by. We're in our we're in our teenage episodes. Yeah. In our te- teenager phase. We're in those teen times, man. <laughs> and and you know what? You are joining us again from the customized van. And you've been doing a little bit of traveling with our good buddy Icaro. I have, yeah. We've we've done a lot of miles in the last five days. Um, I've been in three different countries, uh, but I'm back home now. So I'm I'm in my in my own hometown at the moment. But I've been down to France. I've been in Switzerland. We've been doing some international live installs. That's awesome. At a French chalet, is that correct? Yeah, you make it sound posh. It's just like a wooden building. <laughs> with, no, with no on the roof. Well, man, your your Instagram was fire, man. And, and I know that you're going to be po- posting up some more pictures of what you and Ikro were doing over there at this um, ski resort. Is that correct? I mean, the mountain ranges are just epic yeah so that was the french alps um, we spent three days there a day to get there a day to get back and three days of installation um, but we had a we had a great time so myself with customized and icaro over at Artec. Uh, they're based in london that's cool man well today we're getting back in the saddle we're talking about nulls and we are on our u which stands for wi-fi and uh well, yeah, you, that stands for Wi-Fi, and we're going to talk a little bit more in depth about that, but let's get into it. Yeah, the U, the U actually stems from a brand name. It does stem from Ubiquiti. It's a, it's a brand that we've used for a number of years for our wired and wireless networks in, in homes. Uh, so it fitted in with Nulls, but yes, this is definitely, it should be a W because we're talking Wi-Fi. It just didn't fit right. Hold on, we're no. gonna we're gonna we're gonna run our um, our break into the show. Go ahead, on Mike. There we go. Now we're back. And hey, so yeah, so the U is for ubiquity. It fell, fit into that Knowles acronym uh, over here. For us, we're big into the Eero product for, for Wi-Fi, and you're doing Ubiquity, and they essentially are similar. They both transmit Wi-Fi, and I think a lot of our audience is familiar with the need of Wi-Fi, and, um, but what we do, it's, it's the foundation of everything of our smart solutions that, that we're deploying for our clients. Yeah, so th- this is this is the technology that stems from your internet service provider. They provide you with a modem, and uh, maybe it's got Wi-Fi built in, but it, it never reaches the whole house. Uh, the larger homes struggle to get connections from just a single internet service provider's router or modem. So we are finding that the houses now need they need wiring. To distribute internet, they need wireless access points to receive Wi-Fi connections for the mobile device. But also, um, maybe maybe the U is actually the network. It's the network. So it's also for the wired connections for the smart television, the media streamer, the set-top boxes. It's it's the it's essential infrastructure for for technology. Yeah, and as far as infrastructure, you talked about a little bit there. Is you know we want to make sure if it's uh, available to get wires in the right place. I mean, if there is an opportunity to hardwire any device that you have in your system, definitely we want to take advantage of hardwiring that network because that's 
reliability. It's the most fastest connection to your network to receive data and information. And an extraction from that would be the Wi-Fi aspect of that network. Yeah, if, if you're fortunate enough that either you're, the home that you are in has wiring in place or you have the opportunity to run cables, that could be that you're doing a new construction project or you're doing a, a major refurbishment uh, where you're able to run in those essential wires, then you're, you owe it to the building for today's technology and tomorrow's technology that you give static, non-moving devices a wired connection and also service the property with wireless connections for primarily telephones, tablets, uh, and, and things that things that don't have that that hardwired connection. You know, there's a couple of different frequencies, and I don't want to get too technical, but it's a question that comes up a lot with with our clients in trying to understand Wi-Fi in particular, and that's the 2.4 gigahertz as well as the 5 gigahertz, and understanding the difference as well as the need be between the two. Um, yeah. So for I the go the golden rule is. 2.4 goes further, but is slower. 5 doesn't go so far, but is much faster. You need a mixture of the two. Older devices don't know about 5 gigahertz. They don't have that, that capability. Newer devices prefer the 5 gigahertz. They like the faster connection, but you need to service them with, with more... Uh, wireless access points or wireless antennas in the property. Yeah, it's really important to, uh, to choose a wireless uh, product that provides both frequencies because, you know, we've been out in the field and found some devices that only utilize that 2.4 gigahertz frequency. And there's some that accept the 5 gigahertz, but because of range, it can cause some, some challenges and some hurdles of reliability and connectivity. And also just to finish on the on the techie side, because this is pretty nerdy, 2.4 gigahertz is that capacity in terms of how many devices use that technology. It's it's a full spectrum. There are so many devices within that frequency using it. Um, you know, you could list them all like Bluetooth and um, but also things like that create that like microwave ovens fluorescent lighting all congest that 2.4 gigahertz frequency so 5 gigahertz is like the it's like the toll road that i've traveled on in france less traffic high speeds um uh, but you have to pay a toll <laughs> you have to pay a lot to drive in france i found that out um, yeah. <laughs> but it was it was it was hassle-free motoring because the, the, the congestion just wasn't there. It was elsewhere. That's right. Now, whenever we're deploying Wi-Fi and, and a network, and so a network is hardwired, and, and usually it's being distributed to all of our uh, entertainment locations um, as well as, you know, even out in areas that you would not necessarily think that you would want to have wireless access or even a, a hardwired uh, point uh, for wireless access and garages are getting really popular back patios in the backyard is is very popular JJ my, my golden rule is if you enter that property from the front gate or the driveway and you can go all the way to the backyard through to the fence through to the shed where you might tinker around and leave your tools and all these kind of things we provide Wi-Fi from front fence to back fence from the side of the property to the other side and that's not just in the house that's the garden the garage the shed you you need to be connected to your to your home you don't want to be in this limbo of tethering to 4g or 3g when you're only a few meters away from the property you need to stay connected we talk about the garage there's technology starting to live in that garage your car's going to rely on you know needing updates um, i know you know the, the the poster boy for the smart car is tesla that gets its updates over the air you know so your, your car's going to be 
one of those devices that your garage will need a need a Wi-Fi connection. Man, only a few years ago uh, has it been flexible with the new devices, but in the past, everything had to be hardwired. So if you wanted to expand your wireless signal reliably, it, it had to be hardwired. And there used to be, more technical jargon, access points and bridges, whereas now there's new devices that, that we're utilizing in all of our projects that, that are mesh points, which are which are just an absolute game changer when it comes to reliable connectivity to the network and roaming throughout your home and property. And, and mesh, mesh Wi-Fi systems are the products typically for the home that doesn't have the wiring in place. This using a mesh system, you're able to create a far reaching, robust and secure network for your devices without running cables. So you, you're plugging in antennas that are repeating and extending the signal from from a main router, but they're also able to cross over with other devices, other antennas and create this large cloud of, of wireless coverage. Yeah, throughout throughout the entire property. And it, whenever we were doing it back in the past, there was a lot of drop in between, you know, from your device switching from one antenna into another antenna. And the other problem was is that it wouldn't disconnect from the access point if it didn't reach a, a certain threshold to then reconnect to the stronger signal that was closer by and mesh has really alleviated that as a problem yeah the, the, the technology behind these systems is is monitoring the signal strength is looking at what's available nearby should it pass it over to a stronger signal should it stay where it is it's making these decisions you know these systems are, are very very clever and you you need to know and this is where you need the pro I know a lot of these mesh systems are seen as plug and play, but choose the wrong setting, disable the wrong thing, you know, not you know using secure enough passwords. You're leaving yourself open for, you know, a continuation of pain that you thought was going to go away. You thought you were going to buy this system and it was going to relieve all the Wi-Fi pain, but the wrong setup, the wrong configuration. Again, it just warrants needing that professional installer to. It, you're good. You're not going to have them in your home for long. Trust me. This is why we have the one-hour Wi-Fi service. You're going to have a speedy installation of a very powerful Wi-Fi system in no time at all. But with all this, the setup done, the updates, the the right passwords in place, and and other things set up like administration rights and parental controls and and the, the handover, showing you the features. These systems have some fantastic features for the family. You know what I love about the Knowles package, Gamble, is is the ability to allow clients to understand what is happening, you know, with their systems. And if they need to make adjustments and they feel comfortable of doing so after we leave they're not locked out. There is a clear understanding. Is my system working? Is it not? And they do that through an app. Uh, we, we use Eero. You use Ubiquity. They both have app bases so that clients can really have an understanding, have some data that they can access to make decisions. Yeah. And, and again, to understand these features, there's huge benefits to the professional installer guiding you through this new app that's going to live on your smart device. This is one way we pitch it to some of our clients is this app makes you, the parent, the ruler of the internet. You can control what time little Johnny can go on the Xbox. You can control um, what time uh, the smart TVs can, can be functioning in the, in the kids' playroom. It's, it is giving back power to mom and dad. Yeah, because you can set up different profiles and line item exactly what devices are affected at certain times. You can set it up for schedules of, 
you know, disen disengaging the network to a particular device or engaging it back at a certain time. Uh, and, and you can also, I know with Ubiquity, you can set up different kind of like merit points, you know, of, of earning if, <laughs> if somebody reaches a certain amount of, um, earnings then they can actually access the network uh, it, it's something that i've seen kind of in the in the forums that, that you can do with ubiquity which i thought was a really cool idea of earning access to the wi-fi if you have a kiddo it's kind of like yeah, an allowance that's not one of, that's not a feature i'm aware of so i'm gonna gonna certainly check that out i don't know if that's a regional feature but um just to explain you know we're talking about eero we're talking about unify and for people that are installers they're always asking, well, why Unify? Why do you choose this, Chris? Uh, Ubiquity, for me, have the full suite of products. Okay, so Ubiquity have their their wired range, which are hardwired access points, network switches with multiple connection points for TVs, printers, telephones, um, media systems. You can have them in a central point. You can power devices. You can um, have non-powered network connections. They do a router. They do um, rack-mounted equipment. They do uh, wireless access points ranging in so many different features for indoor and outdoor, different frequencies, um, longer range. That's their, that's their like big brother system. This. So if I'm doing a a large new construction project, I have a single brand for all my network equipment with a single management app and tool, uh, a controller for it, a price point that's very, very accepting by, by customers to have this robust um, wired system in their home. On the flip side, the mesh system from the same company, Ubiquity, is the Amplify mesh system, expandable from one device to many devices, uh, plug-in devices, devices that have outputs for set-top boxes and things like that. So that's why I choose that. And and just I'm interested in the difference between Eero. I don't think they have as wide a suite of products. Am I right? No, they do not. And they really they have two products. I guess a third one if you want to include their POE kit. But they have one hub that can also act as a mesh access point, just depending on how you set it up but it has a router uh, built into it. And what a router is, is kind of like your house's Indian chief. And it says, hey, device, you get this number. And uh, the, every device is assigned a particular address. Think of it as a neighborhood. And that Indian chief assigns everybody an address. And so it's, it's important that you, you have your network set up. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a client's home and they have two routers, which is equivalent to two, having two Indian chiefs in the house, and they are just <laughs> fighting with each other all the time, causing your network to not be reliable. And so understanding what is acceptable in a network environment and not acceptable in a, in a network environment is a, is a real reason to have a, a professional come into the home to, to do a diagnostic to see what you're working with. And like you were saying, Gamble, you don't want to mix match your, your network devices. Uh, just They don't seem to function well together. So Eero, they have a router. Uh, they have a main hub. Uh, it allows you to also uh, add, they call them beacons, which are little devices that you can plug into electrical outlets. And so what we like about it is we can expand across a really large project. I mean, we've done 10,000 square foot homes uh, on an Eero system, and it's completely scalable from one room to the entire house. And what's nice about having that feature is you really don't know what the network signal is going to do until you start applying it. I mean, you can you can map it out, you can put it down on paper, you can look for you know your different obstacles because glass and steel and wood really wreak havoc on on a signal throughout your house. And not until you start deploying it, even if it's pre-wired to the max, not until you start deploying it do you really start unveiling what some of those challenges and hurdles might be? That's right. So just just to emphasize that, that a nulls system, a nulls mindset 
places huge importance on the home network. It's, it's vital. In fact, it's a prerequisite that as a business, we would really have to be pushed hard to, to not install a good network before Nest, before Logitech, before Sonos, before Lutron. We would insist that as part of our work, we, we really feel your home needs the network first. It's like the first. Um, it's, the, it's like the foundation that everything that we build on. Yeah, I, I, I can't really put my name to something if, if I if I'm putting it on something that's going to be weak or fragile or, or or flaky. I really have to put the tech onto a an infrastructure that's going to going to hold up. Yeah, absolutely. And we, we've gone down the route of working with the, the client's out-of-the-box router and depending on the size of the home and the build materials and where devices are placed, sometimes that is that will function. But a lot of the times, a lot of the times, we need to go in there and upgrade at a very affordable price that network throughout the property uh, to make it uh, stable and reliable. Yeah. Gamble. Are you doing so, Gamble Ramble today? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Are you I'm ready up. to go right now for this Gamble Ramble? Something's brewing. Something. Something's brewing. All right, hold on. Let me let me let Mike hit it up. Go, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, hit us up with your Gamble Ramble today. So the, the theme of the Gamble Ramble today is listen to your client listen better now i know my gamble rambles are normally aimed at installers but and they probably think i'm 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 moaning a lot at them but listen to what the client is asking and listen for some key words one of the key words that cropped up today with a with this in fact twice two surveys same word please 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 make it simple for me I am fed up with this causing this issue, hearing this from other members of the family. I'm fed up being the troubleshooter for tech. I'm, I found you, you're a pro, but please make it simple for me. If they're asking for that, that needs to be front and center of your, your proposal, your design, the, the way that the, the system's going to be managed, the way the system's going to be maintained in the future. The homeowner craves simplicity. They've been given simplicity in so many other areas. Simple to shop, simple to travel, simple to maintain your vehicle and buy vehicles. And, you know, your everything in culture is giving the customer simplicity and efficiency and, 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 and a positive experience. Failure to give them the simplicity that they asked for dilutes the experience, leaves a bitter taste, and puts your chances of continuing working with these people on the line. So please, if they ask for it, deliver simplicity. Simplicity to us means nulls, ease <laughs> of use, ease of access. Yeah. You know, uh, expandability, you know, is, is what... Yeah, well, what the... What, one of the things as well, the last job that we did today that I've just left the property and, and it's delayed me doing the show tonight from my usual surroundings, but this is a home that has a, a video matrix, which has several video sources, set up boxes, CCTV, hard drive, etc., and media players all stacked up in a rack in a central position. There's a system that distributes all that video to TVs around the home. Most of them are fine. One of them is not. It goes up and down like a yo-yo. The reliability, the, the, the functionality is lost and, and the audio cuts out and all these things. And again, this, this is a different from the surveys, but this, this gentleman who's asking us to come in and do some work for him, please, please make this simple. For the, the whole time I've had this, I found it difficult to control devices, switch devices, I don't know what to do if things go wrong. Please, 
even if you have to put all the boxes behind the TV, make it simple. But that's what we're going to do. We've proposed something where we take the devices, smaller devices than they have had in the past, and put them closer to the screen, the, the system local, the silo approach that you um, that you pioneered. Yeah, it's, uh, silo is is a daily part of our engineering and designing for our sim- systems and it alleviates the need for some of those pain points of what you just discussed with with matrixes and then trying to figure out what the problem might be uh and so yeah man listen to your clients if they're requesting simple make it simple that's right let's let's just make smart home simple for everyone Hey, Gamble, man, it I cannot believe it's already our time. You know, and one thing that I definitely want to do is thank all of our Patreons, you know, for sh- uh, supporting our show. And if you want to uh, help to support Gamble and I as we uh, continue to put out this cool content, please check out our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash the digital ramble. And if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, Please hit that like button. Please share it with as, as many of your, your friends and colleagues as you can. And if you're listening to this in the podcast, you know, and if you want to hear it on the podcast, it's on all the major platforms. And we would also encourage you to, to share it and, and subscribe to the, to the podcast. Hey, and Gamble, where can people find you on your day job? Oh, I'll be on a road somewhere driving. <laughs> Well, you for the, can for the next few weeks. I'll be in the UK. That's you'll be you in the see. UK, but if they want to check you out online, they can find you at customize.uk.com uh, sure. and check out your all set up package. You were the pioneer of that all set up or that one hour Wi-Fi, uh, and really trying to communicate to an audience of the simplicity of what technology can provide, you know, for for our audiences. And then if you want to know more about myself, I'm JJ Cannon. You can find us at digitaldelight.com. And we have a selection of different devices that are like our top five. You can visit us at our shop. And we are always encouraging that our listeners and viewers drop a comment down below. Share with us your thoughts. Uh, If there's any ideas that you might have for the show, please pop those down in the comments for us as well. And uh, we'll look at trying to add those in. Yeah, and just a reminder, if people do want to see what we got up to in France, um, there's loads of stuff about to drop on our social. Uh, So go and find us on Instagram, at Customized One. Um, And if you want to engage with the Digital Ramble on Instagram, it's at Digital underscore Ramble. All right, my friend. Well, happy trails out there on the road. You be safe. Thank you. Thank you, JJ. All right, until next week, friends. Y'all have a great week. Every month, the Digital Ramble will receive a regular source of income from supporters who've pledged through Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, having your ongoing support means we spend less time thinking about business and more time creating quality content for you. Customize, based in Norfolk, England, are proud sponsors of the Digital Ramble. Check out our all set up services. It's smart home installation with ease customize.uk.com If you're looking to make your basic home smart, check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop where they have a variety of different smart home technology solutions that help make smart home shopping easy for you. Check out digitaldelight.com forward slash shop.